times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we got? Okay guys, welcome back to the channel So today we're going to be going over How to know if you're buying the perfect M52 engine This will relate for the E60 and the E90 So what we're going to do is we're going to go over a couple of things That are usually failed on the E60s and E90s with the M52 engine and this is the main reason why people get rid of them and then you're left with the massive expense to pick up after buying this car now me showing you these things you can easily avoid this and go and buy a much better example and one that has been looked after and loved and given every part it needs in its life and they are available so do not think you can't find any like that because there is loads out there that people have got the money to look after and will put the money in to look after these cars so guys you'll see right here this is the m52 engine this is the one on my E60. This is the one that I always do videos on. This is a perfect example of a perfect running M52. So when you come to view these cars, you're gonna to wanna to start them up. Now, when you start them up, you wanna hear for ticking noise. Do not be put off by ticking noise. It's normal on the M52s to tick. The hydraulic lifters always had an issue. You don't need to replace them. You can use the Forte top end treatment and I know a lot of people always ask me what they can use for their top end for their hydraulic lifters to stop that noise when you change the oil only now to find out if your PCV is bad the way I do it on these cars is when I come to view them I leave the engine running and I open the oil cap now if you open the oil cap and you've got any kind of suction in there you know your CCV is bad now as you'll see mine is fine I don't have suction even though the engine ain't running but it would have a lot of pressure in there from being blown now if it's blown it is a cheaper fix and you guys will relate to my intake manifold repair which is very easy to do but I think it is anyway and you can easily sort it or you have the other choice of walking away but is it worth it not at this time for that one single repair and I'll tell you why because a lot of people don't get that done because they're not aware of it Garages don't know how to do it. Garages charge a fortune to remove the intake manifold. So they clearly won't do it. And that's the reason why a lot of people avoid that and focus on the other repairs. So then you come down to the valve cover. Now, if it leaks, it's gonna leak straight down here onto the exhaust and it will leak from the back. They don't leak from the top on the magnesium valve cover. The plastic ones can if they crack. But if they do leak, it will be running onto the exhaust. And that's usually because that the CCV has gone bad and what's happened is XX vacuum has popped the valve cover and stretched the bolts out from the amount of pressure inside the crankcase. So if that happens, be sure that if the valve cover's leaking, to not avoid it as well, because as I say, I've got the videos up for replacing it, but usually it means it's just been a neglected example. So now you have, like I say, two choices again. You can either walk away or buy it. But again, it's down to you how you want to buy it. Now, when you come to buy these, if it's leaking, don't buy it. If the CCV is bad, don't buy it. But my bet is nine times out of 10, majority of M52s you're gonna buy are gonna have this issue. You'll find, you can find perfect examples that have had the love and care, but that's usually from people who have knowledge of these cars and who will work on them themselves. Now the next one on these that a lot of people will come to see is the Vano solenoids. I'm gonna show you when you come to buy one of these, what this car can do if they're out. Now, a lot of people will be scared of this. They'll come to buy the car and they'll say to themselves, the idles are bouncing all over the place. It's running rough. That is due to them. Now, they only require a 10 mil bolt and take out and put new ones in. But the reason people avoid them is because they're expensive. They're 150 quid each from the dealers to most people who ain't got a trade account. And they're expensive to replace and people will try and avoid it to spend out for that money. And they're crucial for, to advance the Valvetronic. So without them running properly, the car ain't gonna run properly. So then we go on to the oil filter housing gasket. Now the oil filter housing gasket likes to leak and when it leaks, it will run down the side here and you'll have coolant sitting down the bottom of your block down here in the manifold, which you probably won't see, which will sit on the block itself. You also have oil leaking down onto your belts, which if they leak onto your belts, will end up derailing your belt and destroying the tensioner and your idler pulley. Now you guys would have seen, I've replaced that with a genuine BMW one and I've had no leaks um, at all. BMW did revise the oil for housing gasket, so I'd advise using a revised one to be on the safe side so you make sure you don't have no leaks. But if you go to buy one and find that it's leaking and you're not confident enough to fix that yourself, then the way you've got to see it is a garage is going to charge a fortune because they will not be going around the back to do 
it the way it's meant to be done, the way it would have been seen in my videos, they will be taking the manifold off. I know many different ways to get to that bolt without having to take the manifold off, many different ways. And many different ways about having a sticker extension underneath there and mess about of it. There's many different ways of doing it on this car. Now, the drive bit on the pulleys, the tensioner likes to go, so be aware of that on these. And so does the idler pulley. I've changed all of them on this car, and the car now, like I say, my car runs perfect. But to many, that will not have been changed. And it's a job that is very, very easy, especially on the E60s, to change. And getting to it is not hard at all. It can take roughly about half hour just to change them over. And it's very, very simple. And it's a job that you will need to do if you come and buy one of these that most of the owners ain't gonna have done. So let me tell you that right now. The next one that you're gonna come and see is your disavalves. Now as you'll see, your disavalves are right up here and right down there as well under the manifold. There's two on this car, close to 530i. Now if they go bad, they'll rattle and they'll cause a rattling sound, which you'll hear on startup. So when you go to view these engines, make sure you start the car up and hear it for any rattling sound. If it's rattling, it's usually because the pin has dropped inside the manifold and it's rattling around when it's pulling the air through. Now, if that gets into the combustion chamber and that gets into one of the cylinders, what's gonna happen is as the cylinders are moving up and down, it's gonna spit the, the pin straight out the back of the exhaust and the rubber grommet that sits on it as well. So you've got two options here. You can either avoid the engine, not know him, if that pin and the grommet has been swallowed into the cylinder and caused damage to the cylinder itself or the piston ring or you can take the gamble and still buy this car and go and repair it yourself now if that's already happened my best advice would be to avoid this car because if it's been swallowed it's going to end up causing damage and it's going to cause you catastrophic failure and if you're not confident with these cars what will happen is you end up you will have to end up having a new engine it's not something that anybody wants to have done but it can happen so I'd avoid that at all costs. The next one is the water pump and thermostat which sits right down here. Now, many of you guys know they like to fail. Luckily, mine got changed out by the dealer, but that's not for everybody. And when they fail, they'll cause overheating. Now what ends up happening with that is when you start these cars, you'll hear a whining sound. And that's usually because the water pump's on its way out, where someone keeps bleeding the coolant system, which you're not meant to bleed these on this car. You're not meant to keep changing the coolant either. Because I'll tell you why. When you fit these water pumps, you have to pre-fill them with coolant before you stick them back to the engine and collect all the hoses back. Because what happens is, if the system gets airlock, the coolant doesn't reach the pump in time. If it doesn't reach the pump in time, the pump ends up running dry. It's got no lubrication inside the motor, so it burns out your new pump. That's what happens. So the best way to avoid that is just not to bleed your coolant system and leave the coolant alone. You do not have to change coolant in the car. It doesn't die down. I've never in my life known the coolant to go or die down. If you're losing coolant or you think you're losing coolant and it's evaporating, it's usually because you've got a leak, which as I said, the main common leak for coolant is usually through the coolant passages on the oil housing gasket itself. Or it could be leaking from this little neck up here, or it can be leaking from the water pump or thermostat itself. So be aware of that. The next one I'm gonna to speak to you about right now is gonna be the eccentric shaft. Now, the eccentric shaft sits under the valve cover. Many of you won't be aware that what happens is the valve trunk motor moving back and forth ends up sometimes slipping off the teeth of the eccentric shaft and it wears out the teeth on them. Now, if it wears out the teeth on them, it usually relates to one or two things. Usually, because of time in advance, probably because someone ain't changed the solenoids in time and the, the time has just all got messed up, or the timing's out of, out of alignment, which then means you need to retime the engine because the central shaft ain't known when to advance when to retard the timing. Now, a lot of people say it's used just for emissions. The central, I'm assuring you right now, it's just, it's not. It's used to advance the timing as well. That valvetronic motor is critical for the whole Vanos system itself. I know how these engines work and I know how the Vanos works on this engine itself. Without that eccentric shaft, you will not get advancement of your timing. Because when the timing advances, it also turns the valvetronic motor, which then pushes the whole eccentric shaft forward. And then obviously the springs clap onto each other. And then that's what advances the whole timing and gives you that a boost and that torque that you feel. Now, another thing for the water pump, if that fails and it has failed on a previous car, do not buy this hit car. I'll tell you why, because if that fails, the engine overheats, it's made of aluminium. The bolts will pull out from inside the head, sometimes break. Don't, you don't want that. Also, it will damage the valve stem seals on this engine. So if it overheats, what happens is the valve stem seals, as you know, they're like a rubber, they get hot and they perish due to heat. So it's something you want to avoid. If they have gone, avoid the engine at all costs. The next one on these will be your Vanos filters, which sit right down there, as you know, on the head itself, on the cylinder head. They're quite easily accessible. People say they clog up, but 
to be honest with you, they have an old mine. My car still runs fine. Mine is a perfect example of if you were to go and buy an M52 without these issues. And I do say that because I put a lot of love, time and care into this car since owned it. And I'll be honest with you, when I bought this car, it was not the best example. It needed everything doing. It had been very, very neglected by the previous owners. Um, they had just run it and run it into the ground until it just couldn't take any more. I was very lucky I even got this back in one piece and I'd done everything within a month of getting it to make it what it is today. And it's been the most reliable car I have ever owned. Now, another thing you guys are gonna to wanna to be aware of, if you go and buy these, a lot of people like to check underneath to make sure there's no oil leaks. M52 leaks from the sump gasket. It's common. Do not be put off by a leak. That is one thing I'll tell you right now. It's something that always leaks. I've mentioned in previous videos what to do. You get underneath the car, you take out the bolts and make sure you've got new bolts because they're stretch bolts and they're aluminium as well. You cannot reuse them twice. Lower the pan down. You don't need to take the subframe. Put a sealant around the whole sump and then restick it with the new bolts. And you know what happens? The new bolts, because you can stretch them because they're new, they retighten that and the sealant stops the leak coming through the sump gasket itself. Because the sump gasket's a uh, metal type like this, you don't have to worry about it crushing or, or like a rubber. You can use sealant on it and it will perfectly seal. That is the way they used to do it in the dealers. That's the way they still do it now if you've got a sump gasket leak. Now, these cars, as you guys know, I get a lot of you asking me, drink oil. Yes, they do. They like to drink oil one quilly a quarter every thousand miles it's perfectly normal on these engines do not be put off by it it's something that's perfectly normal you've got to remember these engines run a lot hotter for emissions purposes so you've got to remember burns off a lot quicker than your average engine they run at high temperatures they run at, i think i believe 110 celsius these engines because they were designed to do that to get more power out of them make them more fuel efficient and make them more co2 friendly that was the whole reason there is no way around it. You just have to carry oil with you in your boot. Everyone knows that already. It's a common problem. Also, not when you change your oil for a housing gasket, you need to change your oil cooler gasket as well, which sits behind this casing right here. The oil cooler gasket is critical because if that leaks, that's the one that ends up leaking onto your crankshaft pulley right there. And you don't want any of that. Trust me on that. So be advised with that, that you change both of them at the same time. And they usually come as a set. And if you're going to dealer and ask for the housing gasket, I'm sure they're gonna ask you if you want the oil cooler gasket as well, because it would not make sense to change them. Be careful with the oil pressure switch when you do this as well, make sure you disconnect that. So all in all, if you do come to buy one of these, it's really down to personal preference if you're gonna buy it. If it does have all these problems, you've got to ask yourself two questions. Can you get the car for a lower price than what's advertised to fix all these issues? Can you fix it yourself? If you are not gonna fix it yourself, do not buy it because the garage is gonna charge you more than the car is worth to fix all them issues. If it's got one or two issues, it's work, you can take it to a garage. A garage ain't really gonna charge you much, especially here in the UK to fix it. But if it has all these issues as this one did, this is a prime example of a neglected M52, they're gonna rip you to pieces, it's gonna cost more than the car. So be advised to stay clear of that. But if you feel confident enough to go and work on this car, fix this car yourself, then this can be the right car for you. And it's critical you work on it yourself to maintain the cost as low as possible and to keep these cars in tip top condition. Because if you're a normal driver and you know nothing about cars, you're planning to buy one and you don't know when it's leaking oil, you don't know where to look, or you don't know something, these engines can run extremely rough and the longer you leave them, will run worse and worse and worse till the engine just completely deteriorates and blows itself up and you need to put a new engine in. You cannot leave a problem with these cars. As I said to you, if you do buy a car with the vanos solenoids, the update cures that along with the vanos solenoids. Do not just change the vanos solenoids expecting it to work, it ain't gonna work. The update changed the whole fuel trim and the airflow of these cars and made them less CO2 friendly because as I've explained to you previously, as the years go on, all car manufacturers make their cars less CO2 friendly because they have to be so CO2 compliant as they did when they were first released. Also, you wanna make sure if you change the valve cover, that you change these bolts as well. Make sure that these bolts are changed. Do not reuse the same bolts twice because they're stretch down bolts. They're taught to yield, which means they stretch down with heat and the hotter the engine gets, they pull themselves down into the head itself. So make sure you change them bolts on top of the valve cover. The valve cover is a very simple job. Anyone that's needing to do this or ends up buying one of these cars can relate to my video. It's all the same way. It doesn't matter if it's magnesium, plastic, it's all the same. The CCV is the only thing that's different, which runs on like a wire pipe to the manifold instead of having the whole system connected to the manifold.
So guys, right now I'm gonna show you what you need to do to know if your Renault solenoids are bad or the car isn't running right. So we just got in my car and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press the start button. And as you'll see right there, the car starts up. Now, if you go to purchase one of these and you see the idle jumping, 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 or the car running rough, that's when you know there's a problem with the car. And as I said to you, it's down to you if you choose to buy this car or walk away. Because it could be vanilla solenoids, it can be ignition coils, it can even be your spark plugs. So be aware that you might need to change things to find out what the problem is. Your best thing is to scan the car, find what code you got, and if it's your vanilla solenoids, change them with dealer ones. Do not think you can use cheap parts. So the next one, guys, is your ignition coils. Now, I get a lot of people asking me that the ignition coils are failed, and I always tell them, on this car, they do go. Ignition coils like to fail on this. And what usually happens is the Valvetronic motor seal leaks oil straight into the spark plug tubes where the ignition coils sit. So the best thing you need to do is don't just replace the one, replace all six, because if you replace one, two of them, the other four are gonna fail, guaranteed. And while you're replacing them, be sure to replace the spark plugs. Now, my best advice, if you've got oil in the spark plug wells, when you take out the spark plugs, the oil is gonna drop through the spark plug wells into the cylinders. So what you do after changing the valve cover is put injector cleaner in your spark plug tubes and clean out all the oil that's got in there before you put uh, before you put the new spark plugs in. So then that way it all blows it out and cleans it out as you would have seen in my other video, which is the injector one. How to clean the piston rings is in the other video. Make sure you do that because it will leak in there if you've had the oil in there and it will cause a failure where your car to run rough and you'll start blowing blue smoke and it will make your spark plugs not fire properly again because they'll be coated in oil. So that's another thing that if you're going to change the ignition coils, make sure you change all six and the spark plugs all six as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I've just gone over all the things you need to know to be sure you're buying a perfect M52 engine. Now, these parts are not cheap. I've spoke to a lot of people previously regarding this. A lot of people keep asking me, can they use this? Can they? And I always tell them, do not use cheap parts, especially if you pay the garage, because you've got to remember, garage will give no warranty on the part that you've supplied to them. They'll also uh, don't give no guarantee on the labor. So if you have to have it removed and refitted for another one, they will charge you again for labor. So it's better to do the job once and correct the first time than having to do it twice, because you will lose out and fitting a cheap part, you'll be back to square one and having to fit it all over again. So be aware of that. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys and I hope it helps you in purchasing your new M52 engine regardless if that's E60 or E90. If this video has helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.